Allah. We are continuing in our conversation or our observance of the conversation that is happening between Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah and Al Habib al Jallab when he asked him what's God's greatest gift that he grants people. Ibn al Mubarak, the great Imam, said, Gariza to aql, for someone to have deep intelligence, to just intuitively get things right and prioritize things correctly and assess things in the most rightly guided ways. He said, and what if a person does not have that? He said, فَحُسْنُ adab." Then for him to have the centerpiece of our faith, which is good manners. He said, and what if a person does not have good manners? He said, أَخٌ صَالِحٌ يَسْتَشِيرُهُ Then he should at least have, keep close, a righteous brother that he may consult and that may offer him good counsel. And today we continue, Al-Jallab said to him, what if a person doesn't have that brother, doesn't have someone to help check him, he doesn't have his own high level religiosity, or he has not developed yet good character all around, nor does he have someone to help point out these huge potholes under him in, in the journey of life, then what? He said, Fatulu Samt then this person needs to spend a lengthy period of time in his life silent. And that does not mean to have, you know, marathons for how long of a stretch I can go without speaking. That is not possible and not Islamic either. But it means to be highly regulated and restrained and vigilant about how often I speak and how I choose to use my tongue. You know, I previously mentioned to you that when the Prophet ﷺ said to the people, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and the last day must speak good or else he must keep silent. We said that An-Nawawi rahimahullah very sharply and you know, in a very genius way, he said, that means that the default is that you should not be speaking. That's the filter our deen gave us, the how-to, right? From just unleashing your tongue. Not speaking until it becomes clear to you that there's khayr in me speaking. Speaking khayr or silent means be silent unless I'm sure it's khayr. He said, and this hadith means that even if it seems like a 50-50, then the sunnah is to keep silent because it has not yet been made clear to you that it's good for me, meaning the greater good is in me speaking. So that's one of the practical ways for us to think about this. You know, last week when we spoke about mashura, counsel, mutual consultation, we said one of the challenges to us always looking for people to give us renewed perspectives is the fact that we are raised in a way that places education and learning as a phase of life, right? You go through the education phase and then you move on to quote-unquote bigger and better things. Whereas in Islam, you constantly needed mashura because the pursuit of knowledge and experience and know-how and guidance is from the cradle to the grave. This issue of holding the tongue is the exact same way. We are raised and we hear so much about the skill of communication and the art of communication. And these people need to learn how to communicate better. But how often do we hear us or others talk about the art of silence? Developing the skill to give yourself pause. Developing the know-how to restrain yourself from the appetite to just blurt things out and babble on. This is an incalculable treasure to give yourself pause, allow yourself to analyze, to introspect. Whoever has given themselves this has put themselves in a very good place and Allah has granted them a very good lead towards survival. I'm not the one saying this. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man samata naja. Whomever commits themselves to restraining their tongue, to silence, this is a person that will survive. Because this is a person that calculates how costly it could be to have this conversation, to offer this input. To not do this, to not be this way, this will open the door to horrific levels of accountability. 
You know, imagine the human being speaks how much a day? They say the average human being speaks 30,000 words a day. So over the course of a year, that's about 11 million words. The average novel, adult novel, is about 100,000 words. So that is over 100 novels of work are going to come there on the Day of Judgment per every year you've been alive since puberty. So if the average person after the age of 15 lives to 60 or 70, he's going to have five to 6,000 novels written as if you publish them, you are writing these books. That you have to now face all of them, they will be scrutinized, every line of them, and not just what did you say, but even also, why did you say it? This is the horrific level of accountability that a person may face if their tongue is not restrained. And so the, this line, this word, or this bucket of words are words that were offensive, gossiping, backbiting, insulting, and otherwise. This separate line you're going to be held accountable for is going to say that you spoke about Allah without being qualified to do so. You offered your religious opinion without adequate training. Ignorance, deliberate, whether or not, lies against Allah Azza wa Jal. And then this group of words are all the times that you spoke and shared news of an event without confirming that it actually took place. You were casual and just sharing it. And then this time you spoke about Allah's religion correctly, but your motive was not correct. You were showing off when you said that. You were bragging. How does someone survive this degree of scrutiny? This is what our, what our deen wants to call our attention to. It will surely add up. You know when the Prophet ﷺ warned people of little sins, he said, never underestimate your sins because they pile up on a person until they destroy them. You know if your sins were ants, but they accumulate, a horde of ants can kill a lion. It can put you away your words. But your words, so many of the sins of the tongue are not minor sins. You know when Aisha radiallahu anha, just one time, she ever slipped and said Safiya is short, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَةً لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَمَزَجَتْهُ You just said a statement, a passing statement, a gesture. Even your hands speak. Even our thumbs these days speak. You said a statement by gesturing like this about Safiya's height, that had that statement been mixed, blended in with the water of the oceans, it would have contaminated them all. And then there's times when it gets compounded. If your statement in and of itself is evil, but then it tore a relationship apart, it became even worse. If our statements are in and of themselves problematic, and we say them in this month, many of us may not realize we are in the month of Rajab. It is a, one of the four sacred months in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. In this month, the same way the good deeds are compounded and multiplied, the sins are far graver. That would be a distinct category. You know, I'll mention to you about this accountability. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, was one time sick in Mecca, and he was visited by a fellow scholar, a colleague whose name was Saeed ibn Hassan, rahimahullah. And so when he entered, Sufyan said to him, can you tell me again, let's revisit, let's rehearse. They're always studying, right? Sacred knowledge, transmitting the words of the Prophet ﷺ. He said to him, can you tell me again that hadith you one time reported to me from Umm Salih, a woman by the name of Umm Salih? He said, yes, Umm Salih reported to me directly that Safiya bint Shayba, another female narrator, reported to her that Umm Habiba, another female narrator, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Habiba, radiallahu anha, heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, كُلُّ كَلَامِ بْنِ آدَمَ عَلَيْهِ لَا لَهُ إِلَّا أَمْرٌ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ نَهْيٌ عَمْ مُنْكَرٍ أَوْ ذِكْرٌ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ All of the speech of the son of Adam is against him, not for him. Except commanding good, promoting good, 
and prohibiting evil and remembering Allah the mighty and majestic. So a man in attendance in this gathering, he heard this narration being said to Sufyan and he said to him, this hadith is unbearable. And so Sufyan reminded him of something very important. He said, what's so unbearable about this hadith? He said, this is a hadith narrated by a woman from a woman from a woman from the Prophet ﷺ. In other words, he's trying to say to him, these are four steps removed narrators that are still under investigation. That's why I'm telling the man, tell me the hadith. I want to revisit, reconsider, is it authentic or not? Meaning this hadith is not that scary because you can always tell yourself, maybe he actually didn't say it like that, alayhi salatu wasalam. Not any hadith, and not for any person to scrutinize that way, but this scholar is still investigating that hadith's transmission. He's saying, that what's so unbearable about that hadith? It came to us through humans. He said, didn't you hear? Listen to his words. Didn't you hear Allah the most mighty, the most majestic, say in his book, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس there is no good whatsoever in so many of their conversations, except those who are encouraging others to give in charity and encouraging others towards goodness and trying to reconcile, mend between relationships. He said to him, that ayah is Allah directly speaking to you, not, not a hadith that we're still trying to filter. He said, this is the exact same thing. The majority of these things are against you, not for you these gatherings. He said, and didn't you hear yourself Allah say, meaning you read the Quran firsthand, on that day the great spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, the archangel of Allah azza wa jal, the archangel will be there and the angels will be there and no one will be speaking, meaning everyone will realize the consequence of speaking in front of Allah on that day. إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ Except those whom the Most Gracious grants them permission. He said, yes, I heard this ayah. He said, that's the exact same thing as the hadith. And he said to him, and didn't you also hear Allah say, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ By the passage of time, the human being is falling into loss, is in, at, at a failure, at a deficit, always, except for the believers who work righteous deeds, and they're, all, they're encouraging good truth, and encouraging others to hold on to that truth. Those are the only statements, he means, that were being praised. Though He said that is the exact same thing as the hadith that we're investigating, is it true or not? Meaning this case is closed, this subject is clear, speaking is that consequential. May Allah Azza wa help us and you seize our tongues and make them for us and not against us, make us of the few and the exception, and guide us aright in what we think about and what we speak about and what we believe as a result of what we hear. Allahumma ameen, aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al azim li wa lakum. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله In Bukhari and Muslim Al-Mughira رضي الله عنه He narrates that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن الله كره لكم ثلاثا Allah hates to see you in three situations or partaking in three actions He said القيل والقال وكثرة السؤال too much hearsay and too many questions being asked and being wasteful of your wealth. First of all, these three are not some random, you know, separate prophetic instructions. You, lots of hearsay intrigues a person. It does. And also it drives a person also to get busy with things that are not of benefit. And so they just start asking questions that can get them into more and more trouble. And part of those questions also could jade your priorities in life and even how you allocate your assets. And you start saying, oh, this person got that. I need to do this. I need to buy that. And you start wasting of your money. 
this is of the ways the scholars pointed out that these three are related. Also, al mughira it's, it's very beneficial to, to talk about the context of this hadith, of too much hearsay, right, gossip, and asking too many questions, being hyper-technical or, or too curious, too nosy, and wasting of money. He was asked for advice by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, radiallahu an. Muawiyah, you know, when he became the Khalifa of the Muslims, there was a great turbulent period before him. After many of the conquests, there was turbulence, and then finally it settled for a long while, in many respects with Muawiyah, radiallahu an. So he was the Khalifa of the Muslims at a time of great growth and great progress and great renaissance. And of course, it comes with many dangers. And so he told him, give me some advice. So he said, I want to advise you that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah hates these three things. Beware of all this commotion. Stay, get to work. He's trying to tell him, you're building an ummah right now. You're building a civilization. Be careful of these things. This world is filled with doers and talkers. Make sure you're a doer and not a talker. Make sure you surround yourself also with people that are doers and not talkers. And all of us here today, wallahi, we have a share of this amana. We are in the process of rebuilding this ummah. Surround yourself with those who do and not those who talk. People that will not allow you to see past the entertainment, the cartoons that even adults watch so much nowadays, the video games, the, the latest celebrity news, the latest stock news. Remove those people from your life if they offer you nothing but that. That noise will distract you will distract you from many things it, and you will wind up speaking on it and you will not even be able to listen anymore to those that are so important to you and so valuable for you. You know, our, our families feel so disconnected many a times because of this noise. We're so busy talking about so many things, sometimes even with each other, that we don't get to what are the challenges here, what are the needs here. You know, interestingly, speaking about silence, someone can take this hadith and say, yes, I'm not going to talk anymore at home, at all, whatsoever. And that is the one exception our Prophet ﷺ made. He said that, you know, all of the statements of the son of Adam are lahu. They're like folly and they're, they could be worthless. They're futile. And he mentioned very few exceptions. He said, being lighthearted with your family. Muda'abat al-rajul ahlahu. Being lighthearted with your family, that feeds the warmth and fortifies the bonds of the family. You know, a lot of times we use silence as a punishment for our spouses. Whereas silence is supposed to be an asset, like I'm saying, focused to be able to be receptive to our families, receptive to them, not to punish them by stonewalling and never speaking to them, but to actually be listening. And most importantly, and finally, and I'll close with it, silence is extremely important, not just to build the ummah, not just relative silence once again, not just to rebuild our bonds in the family, but to rebuild the core of all of that, which is your faith in Allah Azza wa Jal. As some of the scholars give the beautiful analogy, they say that, you know, the water, a pond of water could be the perfect medium, like a, it's almost like a mirror, if it is perfectly still to show you the brilliant moonlight. But if it is shaken up, if there's vibrations, if there's ripples, it doesn't show the image as beautifully. And so that pond of water is your heart. You need stillness. You need quiet. You need to create safe spaces. You need the silence so that the light of Allah and His guidance and that feeling of nearness to Him, when you perform the physical and the verbal dhikr, the sweetness of it actually shows up and is reflected in your heart. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those that are content with His company and make us a means of betterment whenever we are around our families and allow us a share of rebuilding of this ummah and allow this piece of guidance, in precious guidance of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the value of silence be a stepping stone towards that. Allahumma ameen. Forgive me for the two-minute delay. أقولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا سدد ألسنتنا وسدد قلوبنا واهدنا جميعا سواء السبيل اغفر اللهم للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم مرحم الأموات اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبفضلك عن من سواك وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين